In this video, I'm going to teach you how to prevent plantar fasciitis by finding a shoe that will make your feet stronger, or if you want to prevent plantar fasciitis from coming back, if you had an, um, a pre-existing history of having plantar fasciitis, how to make sure that the pain never comes back. Um, both cases require the same steps of progression. So what we want to do is we want to gradually progress to minimal shoes, um, and that means less support and very flexible sole shoes with lots of room for the toes and everything to move. But you cannot do that overnight. It takes months. And so what we're going to go over today is the progression. Um, what I want you to do first is go from a shoe that is very supportive, which is most shoes on the market, to a shoe that is semi-supportive. And the example we're gonna use is the Ultra. Um, the Ultras have quite a few features that make them perfect for a transition to minimal footwear. Um, the first feature is gonna be zero heel drop. You can look for this term, it's a marketing term, and it's, it means that it's a good shoe for developing foot strength and getting the bones back into their position. So underneath the toes from here, all the way to the part at the heel. This whole thing is completely the same height. It is um, zero heel drop, and that's very important, but you must understand that you cannot just jump into these really quickly. You need to make a gradual progression. So you need to wear these a couple hours a day and slowly um, build up to more time. Um, compare that to a supportive shoe where the heel is really high up. Most shoes, even running shoes or athletic shoes or running shoes or walking shoes, I'm sorry, tennis shoes, they all have elevated heels. These don't. So when you make a progression to this shoe, you're gonna have quite a bit of issues with your calves. Your calves are not used to firing at this range of motion. So what you wanna do is you wanna check out my other video about trigger points and release the trigger points in the calves and also do some calf stretches. This will let you make this progression a lot easier. The next feature of these shoes is that you want to be very flexible, but not crazy flexible. Like um, the minimal shoes that we're going to progress to are very flexible. And this one is, it's a lot more flexible than a supportive shoe, but it's not crazy flexible. So it's just, it's a perfect right in, in, the, in between. So you have a lot of movement at the toes, but you, you don't have that much back here, but you could still bend it if you tried. Okay, so with the supportive shoes, completely inflexible. Minimal shoes, you can bend them in half and wring them out. These ones, you can bend them only under a lot of pressure, so that makes a really good pro progression step. Um, these ones also have a lot of toe room. When you're making the transition to minimal footwear, you will see time and time again me mentioning toe spreading devices. Um, they're really great for realigning the foot bones so that they're in their natural position so they can dissipate force to different joints and bones and different structures in the muscles. And so what you need is a shoe that can accommodate four toe spreading devices like correct toes or um, there's lots of other ones that I mentioned. So this one can accommodate for correct toes while wearing. So that's very important. You can use this with your progression with the toe spreading devices. Another thing that you want to start to work on is having um, less um, tightness of your shoelaces. So when you have a very supportive shoe, a lot of people tie them down tight and that really does hold the bones in just a very static position. That's unfavorable if you want your muscles to be firing and your bones to be working how they should with lots of movement. And so what we want is we want to loosen up your shoes over time and eventually have it very loose all the time, enough to hold the foot in position, but not enough so that it's like, you know, um, excessively tight. Um, these shoes also, you can have a little bit of a heel cup. This one has a little bit, just this plastic, but it's not as rigid as most other supportive shoes. So this is a great um, step to minimal shoes. Once you make it to minimal shoes, you need to make a very, very slow progression. This can take months. It took me about six months just to make it to this shoe. So a minimal shoe to prevent plantar fasciitis and to make your feet strong is going to be very flexible sold all the way Oh, like the whole thing is going to be completely flexible and there should be no padding. Um, if you need padding at first, you can use an insole or a metatarsal pad. Um, so if you start to get symptoms of sesamoiditis, which is like inflammation of the um, structures underneath your big toe joint. So if you get pain under the ball of your big toe joint, that means that you're making the progression too quickly. And so you need to slow it down a bit and use a metatarsal pad. Um, also, there's no heel cup back here. It's completely flexible. Um, there's no arch support in the inside. 
there is it's very loose fitting you should not tie these very tightly the toes it's very spread out in the front just like i was talking about earlier these are all very good characteristics of a minimal footwear shoe if you can make the progression nice and slow especially if you have a pre-existing history of plantar fasciitis you will not have any problems with progressing to these shoes if you just up and change one day and you put these shoes on you're like oh i'm just gonna i'm gonna get really strong i'm gonna eat a bunch of vegetables and protein powder and it's just gonna just magically fix it itself and reconfigure years of horrible biomechanics it doesn't work that way it takes years to fix horrible biomechanics because you're 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 fixing a lot of structures it's not just the muscles that you're fixing okay it's it's the bones it's the connective tissue that connects the bones it's the sensory perception of where the joints are um, their joint angles and how the muscles fire to actually keep that joint stable all these things these are these are changes in the back of your head and your spinal cord these are not just your muscles there's a lot more in your body that needs to change to accommodate for minimal footwear um, so it should be very 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 slow gradual progression I mean even if you are having some plantar fasciitis pain you but you are okay with minimal shoes keep that insole in there for a little bit longer you, you really want to draw this out for a long time I mean even a year um, is a nice slow natural progression to minimal footwear once you make it to this point your feet will look different your toes will spread out you will feel more um, circulation your feet will be warmer because the muscles are actually working how they should and you're not going to have sore feet at the end of the day of walking you should be able to walk on concrete all day without any pain um, the the issue is not because of the shoes you're wearing or the concrete it's the feet they're not strong enough to support themselves so yeah, I hope you guys learned a lot from this video. I had to cover a bunch of random stuff and it was, was a little bit discombobulated. But if you have any questions or concerns, please leave a message below in the comment section. Um, please check out my list of shoes because there's lots of great shoes out there on the market. And I keep my list updated weekly, at least if there's a lot of new shoes that are coming out. I sit there all day and night and I put new shoes up and I test them. So check it out. Um, lots of great minimal shoes on there. And thank you so much for watching. All right, take care guys. Bye.